Hello again everyone, Sir Gatlot here, welcoming you back to part 2 in a series of videos aimed at helping you pass your PMP exam in the area of Earned Value Management. This part 2 video looks at how we can build on what we've already determined to calculate our variance and index values, specifically schedule variance, cost variance, scheduled performance index and cost performance index. You may remember that this uh, series of lessons started with part one, where we looked at the basic concepts of earned value management, how we can look at a particular uh, scenario and derive the planned value, earned value, and actual costs. In this video, we'll be looking at how we can take that information to determine how well we are doing against our original plan in terms of cost and schedule, and therefore how we can calculate schedule variance, cost variance, Schedule Performance Index and Cost Performance Index. In the next video, we'll look at how we can use that information to forecast or look ahead to the end of our project to see where we can come in in terms of cost and schedule. And again, we'll calculate four specific items. Estimate at completion, estimate to completion, variance at completion, and the to complete performance index. So anyway, back to this part two video and a quick refresher of what we've already done. We looked at a situation where we had four tasks over the course of a week, A, B, C, and D. And we identified that each of those tasks cost uh, $50, $100, $200, and $100 in terms of our plan. So before we did anything, that was what we were planning to spend on each of these tasks. Using that information, we were able to, for example, look at the end of day Tuesday and say that the planned value at that point, the budgeted cost of the work scheduled, was $250. In other words, A and B should be complete, C should be half complete at that point. However, if we discovered that the uh, progress was not as expected, um, B you can see is not complete and should be, uh, C is not as complete as it should be, we could determine our earned value, the budgeted cost of work performed, as $170. And then, if in addition we had some information about what these tasks had actually cost so far, we could calculate the actual cost, again, as of the end of day Tuesday, actual cost of work performed being $200. So let's look at that graphically. And what you can see here is these curves, the blue one there, is the planned value curve how we planned to spend our money during the life of the project. And typically, these type of curves do form an S shape, like you see there. And they are referred to as S curves. And you'll see if we plot our actual cost, we've ended up here, end of day Tuesday, $200 for our actual costs. But we've actually earned just $170 worth of work. So you can see if we compare earned value against what we should have done, we're well behind schedule. Not only that, for the work that we have actually achieved, we've spent more than we should have done to get to that level. So our actual costs exceed earned value. So looking at this, you can see that we're behind schedule and over budget. But let's see how we can calculate exactly how much we are. To do that, we need f four items that we have to be able to derive. Schedule variance, cost variance, Schedule Performance Index and Cost Performance Index, and not surprisingly there are formulas for these. But I think I can help you remember those formulas. You do need to memorize them, but if you have a, a brain failure during the exam, then maybe we can derive them. They are all formulas, so of course we would expect to see equals for all of them. And for all of these four formulas, the first thing, in other words, what we're comparing against is earned value. Now for those first two, those are variances, so you'd expect that we would use the minus or subtraction to be able to calculate the variance between two items. And because we're talking about schedule, we can think, well, this is probably plan. Now this is the only time you can use the words plan and schedule in the same breath when you're thinking about your PMP exam, as you've probably determined by now. For the cost variance, what we're going to subtract is the actual costs. Now, for index values, where you calculate an index mathematically, what you're talking about is a, a division.
But again, when we're looking at the scheduled performance index, what we divide the earned value by is going to be planned value. And the cost performance index, we're going to divide earned value by actual cost. So I think you can see if you think through these formulas, you can derive them if you do fail to remember them. Now, a quick word for both the variance um, um, items there, a positive result means good. In other words, you're either ahead of schedule or positive cost variance means you're under budget. For the index values, you want greater than one. That's a good result. Less than one is not a good result. So let's do the calculations in the example we have here. For schedule variance, you remember that we had the earned value and the planned value of 170 and 250. If we subtract those, we get minus 80. In other words, we're $80 behind where we should have been in terms of what we should have achieved by now. Cost variance, 170 minus 200, gives minus 30. And that's telling us that even for that work that we have achieved, albeit that we're behind schedule, it costs us $30 more than we expected. Schedule performance index is going to be 170 divided by 250. That's going to give us 0.68. In other words, we are only achieving 0.68 of the amount of, of work that we should have done. Cost performance index, 170 divided by 200, is 0.85, which means we're only spending our money at an efficiency rate of 0.85. OK, so looking back to our original problem with the plan value, earn value, and actual cost that we, we just lifted straight out of the question there, we see the values we've just calculated. Schedule variance of eight minus 80, cost variance minus 30, schedule performance index of 0.68, and a cost performance index of 0.85. So in part three, what we'll be doing is looking ahead to see how we can see what all of this information means for our anticipated end of our project. Are we going to come in over budget, under budget? Are we going to be late or early? Look at that another way. As you know, we're here at this point. We've calculated what all these values are. What we want to do is see what that means in terms of the end of our project. We know what our budget at completion is because we, we've budgeted our project, and incidentally, Budget at completion is the same thing as the planned value for your entire project. What we're going to do in our next video is to calculate and track forward for, um, costs and our own value to see where we're going to end up. So again, a reminder of what we've done so far and where we're headed. In the first video, we looked at how we can derive planned value, earned value, and actual costs. In this video, we calculated exactly how good or bad we are at this point in terms of schedule and cost using uh, the variance values of schedule variance and cost variance and the index values, schedule performance index and cost performance index. Next time around, we'll be looking ahead to see what all of this means in terms of the end of our project, estimate at completion, estimate to complete, how much it's going to cost to get from here to that uh, final uh, figure, our variance at completion, the difference between our budget at completion and our estimate at completion, and the two complete performance index, how efficient do we have to be with the money we have left to be able to come in on budget. So thanks for watching. I would ask you once again to visit our sponsor, Westall Murray International, a project management consulting services and training company. And you can certainly go to Wessel Murray's website to find out how to engage Sir Gant a lot to come along and provide training in your own organizations if you like. And uh, so thank you for watching and please do join me again for another video in due course.